Let's get started with Docker. For that, go ahead and open up a terminal. And if you're using the Docker toolbox, don't forget to open up a Docker Quick Start terminal instead. So once you're here and you have your terminal launched, let's go ahead and run docker space run space hello dash world. As this command runs from start to finish, it's going to perform four key steps that demonstrates how multiple Docker tools in the Docker ecosystem work together. Most of the time running this command is Docker downloading a file from a magical place called the Docker Hub. We'll explore that place in detail later on in this section. When it finishes, you should see the hello from Docker message that I see. In the off chance Docker changes their hello world message in the future, don't worry about that. What you see on my screen is good enough to explain what's going on. Docker was kind enough to break down each step for us in the message, so let's read it. First up, we use the Docker CLI to communicate with the Docker daemon. That's the client server architecture coming into play. If you look near the top of the output, the very first line was that Docker couldn't find the hello world image locally. Since it couldn't find it, it moved on to step two, which informs the Docker daemon to pull the hello world image from the Docker hub. You can think of pulling as downloading, except unlike a regular download, it's much more similar to how get pulls down a new revision of source code. It only downloads the difference that changed between both versions. It's very efficient. So now that we have the image downloaded, it moves on to step three, which is to run the image. A running instance of a Docker image is called a Docker container. And I'll talk more about that in the next lecture. In this case, the Docker image was programmed to output a hello from Docker message. How that's implemented isn't important. It could be using the echo command, which is a utility that comes with any Unix-like operating system, or it could have been done with any programming language. That's the beauty of Docker. All we have to do is run the Docker image. We don't need to know how it works under the hood or how to configure our system to run it. The last step was the Docker daemon receiving the output from the running container and sending it back to us through the terminal. At the end of the day, output from a Ruby program or output from a Node.js app is the same thing. Its characters are written to standard output, which is something that your terminal understands. Now, just for fun, Let's go ahead and rerun the same command we just ran. You can hit the up arrow to scroll back to previous commands you've ran in your terminal. Notice how much faster it finishes the second time around. It still performed steps one, three, and four, but it skipped step two because the Docker image already exists on your system. All Docker had to do was run the hello world image. And that's it for the hello world example. In the next lecture, we're going to talk more about Docker images and containers. But before we do that, I have a challenge for you. Take a look at the next sentence after the four steps in the Docker hello message. It says if you're feeling ambitious, you can spin up an Ubuntu container by running this command. If you plan to become a successful software developer or sysadmin, you better have some sense of adventure. So here's your first challenge. Instead of running that command exactly, try running this command instead. Docker space run space dash it space alpine space sh. This command is very similar to the one that Docker recommends we run, but in this case we are replacing Ubuntu with alpine. Alpine is a very lightweight Linux distribution. I didn't want you to run Ubuntu because it will need to download a few hundred megs, whereas alpine is only about two megs. You don't need to understand the details of the command yet, just play with it but I only recommend doing this challenge if you have a basic understanding of Linux, because it's going to drop you into a Linux terminal where you can explore the file system of Alpine. If you're not filling up to the challenge, don't worry, it's not essential. I just want you to get used to working with Docker. If you get stuck inside the terminal, you can type exit and press enter to leave. Anyways, I'll see you in the next lecture where we'll talk more about Docker images and Docker containers. See you there.